forefathers were generals and emperors, confronts the modern world with unflinching scorn. You must have heard about Rajas and Maharajas of India. The Nawab is a Muslim man. And the Hindus are known as Rajas, Maharajas. The Muslims were known as Nawab. In the good old days, my grandfather and father were Nawab. But now, with the land reform, I am a petty farmer now. Being born in a very respectable house, one has to be trained very hard for exercise, for work, for administrative basis, because he has to look after so many people and so many families. The Nawab's idea of a petty farmer is someone who, like himself, owns six villages. It gives him a useful supply of feudal retainers when he goes tent pegging, which is an old family tradition. My grandfather was a general in the guide's cavalry and he himself was a very good tent pegger and it was coming down the family. The Nawab goes tent pegging with his small army every day and not just for amusement. He's in deadly earnest, polishing his skills for the great contest at the Lahore show, scene of Pakistan's premier tournament. Tent pegging, as the Nawab likes to remind everyone in earshot, is not just about a well-aimed lance. It's pre-eminently about style. This should be the position. He should be straight up and completely out of the saddle. He should be a full statue like this. This is the main position of tent pegging. Oh, sir, the best tent peggers are those who, until they reach the peg, their eyelashes should not be moving. They are just a stone statue on a horse, moving at full gallop. Old cavalries were like this. We are practicing the same thing. And we give the war cry also. We call one of our name of our prophet, who was a very brave person. He charged the uh, fort of Khyber in Saudi Arabia. And there he lifted the whole gate of the fort with his lance. That's a difficult job. So we call his name when we charge. You see, a horse comes with a religion. It is mentioned in the Quran. And myself, I, I am in love with horses. I must see a horse every day. I must ride a horse. I must pet a horse. We are the old rusty rustics of this area. And we like these old sports, which are now diminishing in this world. Now new things are coming up. People dress different ways but we are keeping our old tradition. The Lahore show is now only days away, but the Nawab remains a stranger to self-doubt. That was a very good run. The horse was very far away from the pet, and I had to lean all the way out to get the pet. I think this is the best practice for the Lahore show, and I am practicing every day. I am going to win the show. Imperial India loved to flex its muscles. Ceremonial parades and sporting contests, for which the English borrowed a native word, Gymkhana, were emblems of the power of the Raj itself. And the star of these great spectacles was always the Indian Army Cavalry, with its teams of tent beggars. They were so popular that they were shipped to England, horses and all, for the first royal tournament in 1880. Such scenes have not entirely vanished. For five days, the stadium at Lahore is the stage for the annual show. A tinted village springs to life as the caravans arrive, with their hordes of spectators, their indigenous buskers, and their freestyle competitors. Part Horse of the Year show, part military tattoo, it is also a display case for the best breeders of livestock from every corner of Pakistan. 
the encampment quickly becomes a small ragged city in which the contestants and exhibitors share quarters with their animals. At some remove from all this, the Nawab has his own accommodation. I have a house uh, near the stadium and every morning I have to get my servants ready and my animals ready uh, at the proper time. So we reach the horse show ground at uh, 1.30 to start uh, with the show. We start from the cavalcade and uh, when the cavalcade finishes, we start with the tent peg. And after that, my animals come back to the house because there is not uh, proper care taken at the stars there, although some animals are there, but the best animals I keep at my own house. We are going to the show. The weather is quite fine today. It was not, uh, there was not a good weather yesterday. And I hope we'll have a fine day today. All these animals have been brought 300 miles from my village to be shown in this show. And uh, I hope to win when many prizes here. The opening ceremony is notable for the absence of President Zia, but he sent his chief of staff along to deputize. The Nawab will not be pleased. Pipers, more than a hundred of them, and all homegrown, are not incongruous. The tradition goes back 150 years when a Scottish regiment introduced local musicians to the Highland Pipes. Ever since then, in the Highlands beyond Peshaw, the pipes have been played and the kilts have been worn, but only by men born to the colours. When the British were ruling the subcontinent, they were very conscious that the people whom they recruited in the army belong to the warlike family and uh, they took pains while recruiting a person to look at his family background to learn that his father and forefathers had been in battle so the persons coming in these old fine cavalry were all of the fighting races. They never took a cobbler or a weaver to, <laughs> to, to be a cavalry man. You cannot expect a rayhound to go and fight a bulldog. So it is the breed which counts. If, if a breed counts in dogs and horses, it must count in men also. Simple logic. Today, the Nawab's logic tells him he will be a greyhound among bulldogs. The other competitors think that these old tent peggers who are coming here for the last 30 years have a monopoly over tent pegging. So they want to show that they are better tent peggers than us. But uh, tent pegging is a game which comes from father to son. So if they think that uh, they can overthrow us, uh, it's a very impossible job because they don't know how to sit in the saddle. The world is changing, but something has to be maintained. You have seen the neck of my horse on which I tend to. If you take the old Mughal painting, you will see that this horse has come right out of the painting. So this breed has been maintained right from the Mughal days. It developed a very fine neck. <laughs> Style is always there, you know. And a dying lord should always keep his style. The traditions of the good old days should be maintained. Traditions of tent pegging are splendidly maintained, with a drill display team setting up the targets and an umpire reciting the rules. 
This is the 10 pegging we are holding, conducting preliminary rounds of team of fours. Four riders, four 10 peggers will run at a time and every one of them should pull the first peg laid on the ground. If he pulls the second one, he gets a zero mark. If he pulls the correct peg, which is the first one, he gets four marks. And all the four carried the pegs get 16 marks. When all the uh, people have run, we will choose all those who have got eight marks. That will be the second round. We are now conducting starting the first round. When the British judges were here, they used to see that uh, a tent pegger who came out of his horse received four marks for tent pegging, four marks for his position, and four marks for the run of the horse. But unfortunately, there are no good judges here to judge that. They have given only four marks for taking the peg, which I think is a very poor sport now. Any Tom, Dick and Harry riding a small pony could pick the peg up with his hand from the ground. And a six foot tall man with a huge horse uh, where the peg is very hard to pick. If he goes unsuccessful, there are no marks for him. Although he should have received eight marks for his style and for a good horse. In his first run, the Nawab had a perfect score. The second run didn't go so well. I hit my bag, it split into two. So it's an unlucky day for me. I only get two marks. No, I'm in. I scored 24 marks on both my runs. So I'm in the competition. Do you have a chance of winning your... Sure, I win the competition. I'm sure of winning the competition. If I were still in the old 20s, I would have loved to be on, horse, on the back of a horse and leading all that cavalry into those old battles and win some flag and success for my company and myself. And you should have a vivid imagination, think yourself in battle, that you are charging at a fort with the lance with the whole cavalry behind you, not alone, you see. I remember Tennyson saying about the uh, charge of the Light Brigade, you see, and uh, there's so much poetry about these old cavalry charge that if one reads, uh, one daily when he is riding off, he is riding with the writer of the poem. Alas, the Nawab had to settle for a mere silver trophy. And that was not even for tent pegging, it was for the best bull. Even worse, he had to receive the prize from the president's understudy. So I have always received prizes from the very best people in the world. And I was expecting to receive my prizes from the president himself. But as there is no alternative, he has to receive the prizes from the Grand Chief of Staff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> People might think me a fool, you see, in this uh, 20th century, thinking about the good old days of long ago. <laughs> the Nawab of Malakata. A splendid man, man of passion, man who says just what he thinks and no messing. And those horses of his, magnificent. How I wish on the odd gloomy day here that I could summon up that mustachioed centaur and his fiery steeds.